Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share 10 traits of narcissistic mothers. Now, nobody wants to believe that their mother is a narcissist. I know I didn't. In fact, at the time of experiencing abuse from my mother, I wasn't really aware of what was happening. I was quite young when it started and I didn't know that there was a name for what I was experiencing. Now, I've already shared my story at myinvisiblestory.com on my blog. And although my story and experience was quite traumatic, I have to put in a trigger warning there, uh, you might be able to relate to it in some way. So let me start by stating the most important thing you can do when looking to recover from the effects of having a narcissistic mother. Now, it's absolutely vital to accept that your mother is a narcissist. If you don't, she'll be able to continue to control you emotionally and in any other way she feels fit. If you do accept it, the ball is in your court and you can then choose what to do next, i.e. take your life back. So what is a narcissistic mother? Seeing as you're reading this, I'm assuming you know what a narcissist is. Well, a narcissistic mother has very similar traits with a little twist in that it being maternal narcissism, it affects your life in a different way. A narcissistic mother is a parent with narcissistic personality disorder who typically are exclusively and possessively close to their children and they're also threatened by their children's growing independence. So this results in a pattern of narcissistic attachment with the parent considering that the child exists solely to fulfil the parent's needs and wishes. A narcissistic mother will often try to control their children with threats and emotional abuse. Narcissistic parenting adversely affects the psychological development of the children. It affects their reasoning, their emotional, ethical and societal behaviours and attitudes. Personal boundaries are often disregarded uh, with the goal of moulding and manipulating the child to satisfy the parent's expectations. Narcissistic mothers also have low self-esteem and they feel the need to control how others regard them, fearing that otherwise they'll probably be blamed or rejected and their personal inadequacies will be totally exposed. Narcissistic mothers are self-absorbed, often uh, to the point of grandiosity. They also tend to be inflexible and they lack the empathy necessary for child raising. So it's not always easy to spot a narcissistic mother, especially when you're on the outside looking in. But let me share with you at least 10 traits of narcissistic mothers as they usually have the following traits. One, conversations always revolve around them. So if a conversation isn't about them, they'll take control of the conversation by redirecting it to make it about themselves. In my experience, I could be uh, trying to talk to my mother about challenges I was having with schoolwork and she'd say something like, well, well when I was in school, I was the best in class. No one could beat me. Now, did I feel like my issue was addressed? No. But was my mother successful in making it about her? Yes. Two, they deeply care about their appearance and what people think of them. So they are people pleasers and they care about what people think of them. They'll go to any length to look good in front of others in order to have people singing their praises uh, to their fake persona. So my mother would always shop at the best designer stores in London, um, looking head to toe glamorous, compliments everywhere. Yet, um, she wouldn't look after her own children's well-being and appearance. Number three, there are inconsistencies with loving you. So a narcissistic mother's love is very conditional. They will use love to both reward and to punish you. One moment they will pretend to show you love when you do something that they approve of. But if you dare to go up against them and their so-called love is pulled out from you like a rug. And they also know that the most powerful weapon to use on their children is their love. So when a child does really experience the love, it's usually a public display of affection to make them look good. 
like a loving parent. However, behind closed doors, it's a completely different story. So in my childhood, one minute my mother would be um, calling me her favourite child and the next she'll be telling me I was useless and treating me like she hated me, basically. Well, that's how I felt as a young child. Whilst other kids were playing games like, you know, he loves me, he loves me, not games. As a child, and a lot of child, children experience this who have gone through um, growing up with a narcissistic mother, they will question whether their mum loves them or not. They'll be confused about it. And that question will always be centred around their mother. Number four, they pick you and your life apart at any given opportunity. So with a narcissistic mother, nothing you do is ever right. They'll criticise you in any way they see fit. It might be about the way you look, your finances, your personal relationships, your work, etc., their criticisms always have the undertones of uh, you're not good enough and never will be. Their criticisms are in no way constructive, but are spoken to make you feel unworthy. They absolutely refuse to take accountability and responsibility. No matter what, a narcissistic mother will never take accountability or responsibility for their own behaviour or actions. It's always someone else's fault. When you try to make them take responsibility they'll end up blaming and shaming you instead so you know you're not likely to get an apology either number six they will divide the family so they usually try and play family members against each other with the intent to divide and conquer uh, they're, nev they're never happy with the family being together peacefully. And again, this is part of the emotional control and inner turmoil they're experiencing. They need to feel like the only person who matters. Causing this kind of destruction gives them a feeling of accomplishment. So my siblings and I, we, we were played off against each other, um, as was our father and a brother. Number seven, manipulation is their favourite game. So they like to remain in control. They have to control every aspect of their children's lives. They do this by manipulation in the form of gaslighting, guilt and shaming. So the motive is to emotionally blackmail their kids to make them do what they want. When you challenge them, they get narcissistic rage, blaming children and the others instead of acknowledging that they are most likely the cause and the issue. So when I was about to do my GCSE exams, which are exams here in the UK when you're about 16, um, my mother appeared concerned that I might be nervous or I might not be pro properly prepared for the exams. And on the morning of my exam, she gave me a leaflet saying what to do if you fail your GCSEs. Now, <clears throat> needless to say, that only had the opposite effect intended. And actually, it motivated me to pass all of them with flying colours, which I did. Number eight, they lack empathy. So they can't take your thoughts and feelings seriously. The reason is because to them, you're not a real person, but you're an object, a thing. They take possession over. You can never approach a narcissistic mother expecting her to empathise with your situation they only care about themselves, so there's no room to consider other people's emotions, especially their own kids. Nine, they are highly sensitive. It's actually ironic how a narcissistic mother will criticise you until you completely doubt your own perception and abilities. Yet, if you criticise them, they can't handle it at all. Their ego is extremely fragile due to having a low self-esteem. So even though they put on this grandiose facade, they are actually empty on the inside, uh, have unresolved core wounds, a bad self-image, low self-confidence and self-loathing. Although others may be fooled by their act, their children see the other side and they are the ones that are often burdened with their low moods, anxiety and depression. 10. Jealousy and comp competition rules over them. I mean, who wants to be in competition with their own mother? In this toxic relationship, the boundaries between uh, the child and the parent, they become very blurred. 
And this happened to me where my mother used to feel threatened by my youth and how I looked even as a child. I was constantly compared to her or my sisters and we'd often be told, why can't you be more like so-and-so? So my mother would constantly set the bar high for all of us. And you cannot feel like your own person with your own proud achievements with a narcissist. Everything you do is somehow bound to them. So how are the children affected? Now, the role of a mother is vital in any child's life. So children of a narcissistic mother, they usually have the burden of dealing with the roller coaster of emotions, um, the constant manipulation and feelings of never being good enough, uh, which leads the children to always try to appease their mothers. Now, that causes them to almost beg for crumbs of affectional validation. The one and most important person in their life who should be nurturing them is the same one breaking them down and leaving them to grow up having to pick up the pieces and walk in the shadows of their parent. One thing that most victims of narcissistic abuse have in common is that somewhere in their childhood they've experienced some form of narcissistic abuse and it's normally parental, maybe from a mother or a father. So those are the 10 points I wanted to go over. You might be able to relate to some of them and hopefully it's given you some understanding. You know, it's hard to actually, when people say narcissistic, they throw that term around very loosely. And I always speak to people about the fact that it's a mental health issue. Um, Everybody has a little narcissism in them, but, you know, there's a spectrum. And for someone to actually be a narcissist, they're usually medically diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, But some people do show the traits um, and you can see it. It's quite obvious. So if you can see these traits in your mother, um, then I hope it's helped you to kind of understand Uh, why they're doing what they're doing and how they're going about it and um, hopefully this can give you some insight and know what steps you can take next. I am going to go deeper into this uh, subject area as well um, so you can know exactly what you can do next and also how having a narcissistic parent tends to manifest into adult life and relationships So I'll end this one here, guys. I hope that's helped you and I'll see you on the next podcast.